Hello everyone and all, so the Flash has been out for a while, hopefully you've got some time to watch it because this is my spoiler review, there's some stuff that I'd like to talk about in here. So if you have not seen the Flash, I recommend you stay off this video, go and watch the film, then come back, unless you don't care for whatever reason. Let's go. So if you saw my uh, spoiler free review, um, you'll know that I really enjoyed the film. Don't know if it's one of the best. I think it's a bit too early um, to call it that and one of the worst, uh, depending how the future of the films go, because this is a very 50-50 movie now. It was originally getting good reviews. You know, some people like it. People, on the other hand, do not. And those are some spoilers we're going to get into here. So we open off basically with um, the real Flash himself, you know, Ezra Miller, Barry Allen. And, you know, he's there's basically um, Ben Affleck as Batman. It's the only time where you get to see him as Batman in the opening sequence, which was fair enough, I guess, you know. And I like he's wearing sort of a blue... Uh, mask and a cape so it looks like as if he's part of the justice league you know and and the obvious problem that going in people are talking about is the cgi um not as much until we'll get into later on but at the beginning you see the flash saving all these babies you know which does seem a little over the top, you know, especially whenever he puts one of the babies into the microwave to keep him safe and all. Overall, I thought this scene was um, fun enough, you know, um, we get to see a cameo, our first cameo of Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. You know, you hear the Wonder Woman thing, which is great, you know, Wonder Woman, Ben Affleck's Batman and The Flash. Uh, re reuniting each other, which is nice. You know, it feels like you're watching a mini Justice League live action episode, which is cool. And um, then we go straight into the storyline. You know, we see the Flash and his parents, you know, as he's time traveling. And then he eventually gets to meet his other self, the younger version of himself, Barry Allen, and all. So then going straight in to the um, Michael Keaton Wayne Manor, you know, it's all um, creepy looking, you know, it's all, um, you know, it's all quiet and all. And then there's um, Bruce Wayne, uh, Michael Keaton, with long hair, <laughs> and you know he's making um, spaghetti and talking about all this time travel, and then later on in the film, you know, he's getting his suit off. You know, he's saying, "I'll help you get the Superman." Then you're on your own. You know that scene right there just got me chills. It got me hooked. It was just like, mm, "I'm ready." Then of course we do. Hear the Danny Elfman Batman theme, which is just great, you know, whenever they're going up in the Batwing and all, then they're finding Superman. But it turns out it's not Superman, it's Supergirl, um, uh, Sasha Keller. I don't know how you pronounce her name properly, but as I said in the spoiler free review, she was a highlight in the film for sure. Unfortunately, she does not get much to do, though. So the two Flashes and Michael Keaton, Batman, um, do eventually have action going on. Then they find Supergirl. You know, they bring each other back. And I love the moment where never Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne has his Batman suit off and tries to get all the bullets off him. It's great because, obviously, you'll remember. But Batman um, going like this um, with his cape and all, gaping all the bullets away from him. And then um, 
you see Supergirl um trying to save one of the um Barry Allens, <clears throat> and um you know there's lightning and all. And then they make another Flash suit made out of the '80s Batman suit, which is quite funny. You know they put it on the other Barry Allen, the younger Barry Allen. Then of course you do get the good phrase, you know, you want to get nuts. Let's get nuts. <laughs> it's great, you know, sometimes the trailers can play it out better, sometimes the movie can play it out better, but it is what it is though. It's still cool to hear that phrase, let's get nuts. You know, then of course you do get straight into action, you see um, uh, General Zod and a female General Sword somehow. You know, it's a little weird. You know. And, you know, uh, Supergirl and Michael Keane's Batman do unfortunately get killed off somehow. As if this was trying to be like um, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Which is saying. But, you know. No, I didn't flat out hate the idea of killing them off, but I mean, it is what it is. I mean, suppose I could take it over the death scenes in um, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, you know. And then, of course, we go into, which is quite possibly the most talk about spoiler and thing in The Flash, more talked about than Michael Keaton's Batman, should we say the least. And that is, of course cameos. A lot of people have had complaints about the cameos simply because of the CGI, the use of CGI involving around them. And then you see other characters from past eras, you know, you see George Reeves Superman and you get to see a cartoon Chris Reeves Superman, the OG Superman that we all know and love. With the Supergirl from the 80s, you know, you do, of course, see Adam West's Batman, you know, you get to see the original Flash in there. And your man, Nicolas Cage. Ha 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 ha. So, you know, that was a bit of a surprise to see Nicolas Cage as Superman in there, you know, because Tim Burton was originally going to um, make um, a Superman movie with. Nicholas Cage. I, I don't know exactly why that didn't happen. Someone correct me in the comments. But that was great scenes. Most of the cameos, but really the problem is the CGI. Like, you could have just used some of the CGI. I get why they were trying to get Chris Reeve Superman and the Supergirl from the 80s to get the, to make it a nice shot, but Honestly, though, you really could have used some footage. I mean, they've used some footage from Adam West's Batman, if I remember correctly. And then, of course, you do get to see um, the real Barry Allen um, seeing um, his mother uh, one last time. And then we get to the next talked about moment, which is a bit of a hilariosity moment. Um, you see Bruce Wayne's car at the end, he comes out, you know, is that either Michael Keaton or Ben Affleck? And whoa, it's George Clooney. Okay, George Clooney from Batman and Robin, the Batman film that we all dislike and hate. You know, like that really conflicts me. But then again, I don't think he is the real um, Batman for this up-and-coming um, James Gunn DC universe that we're getting due to Batman the Brave and the Bold um, being the same director as The Flash, who I can't pronounce the name properly, sorry, but... But James Gunn said that it's going to be a new actor anyway, so I'm very curious to see who the new actor is going to be. And then you do get one post credit scene that involves with Barry Allen and Arthur Curry, um, you know, Aquaman, uh, Jason Momoa. And I don't know, 
to be honest, this might be my last DC Extended Universe film that I'll go out and see in the cinema. Um, but I'll see what happens. There's Blue Beetle, then the Aquaman sequel, but I'll see. Um, Guardians 3, I know, is my last MCU film I'm seeing in the cinema. And Secret Invasion, I am watching, but it's mainly just the movies from the MCU. But anyways, this is the DC Extended Universe, anyway. So... But yeah, overall, guys, um, this film isn't like an instant classic or anything. I wouldn't go that far. I personally prefer the Michael Keaton Batman films over this film. And hey, I even yesterday, for the first time, watched the pilot episode of the OG Flash from the 90s, which is literally um, like um, 94 minutes long, I believe. It's a few minutes longer than Superman for the Quest for Peace, fun fact. You know, Danny Elfman composed the thing for The Flash just like he did for the original Batman, you know? And yet, the 90s Flash uh, pilot episode actually felt like an actual Flash movie. Felt like it was part of um, um, the same, you know, sort of 70s, 80s, 90s live action Justice League lined with uh, Linda Carter, Wonder Woman, uh, Chris Reeve, Superman, and Michael Keaton's Batman, you know, just the four of them. But, you know, I think that is actually kind of better, to be honest with you, because despite how dated that that looks, the pilot episode, I had a fun time watching that anyway. But all in all, The Flash, I think, is a pretty good movie, I think. I don't think it's, like, um, one of the best comic book movies of all time, but I will say, though, it's one of the better films in the DC Extended Universe for sure, and it probably ranks between the middle of the middle and the top, but I wouldn't exactly put it in the top three, to be honest with you. You know, um, The Suicide Squad is certainly deserving in that spot for sure. And also, um, if you guys like um, some uh, Irish media content, um, Saoirse Monica Jackson is in this, who plays, um, from the TV series The Dairy Girls, um, it's a Netflix series, give it a watch, guys, it's great, she's in The Flash, so, she was really good, not a lot of screen time for her in the movie, but she's good too, but there you go, guys, that's all I've got to say about The Flash, regards to spoilers, so comment down below, let me know below, what was your favorite moment in the flash let me know below in the comments let's have a great discussion down there and if you're new to my channel i'm a movie reviewer from the uk who reviews movies on older stuff and newer stuff because that's all good and as always again feel free to comment like subscribe share this video and notify that bell before you leave and as always until my next video i shall see you then and peace.